of the Iranian Revolution and of the Islamic Republic of Iran. One does not even have to agree with the system, the, the, all of the aspects of the political system of Iran. That is for the Iranian people to decide. But honest and respectful people have to recognize these achievements, I suggest. Now, the United Nations Development Program has confirmed to us recently something that perhaps many of us suspected. Iran in 1979 was a backward country, a, dis a humiliated country. The average number of years that children went to school was a little bit over two. A bit over two years average. I'm not talking about some elites, we're talking about all of the children. Now it is over ten. Ten years of school. Can you imagine the difference? Five times the amount of average schooling in that country. And this is because the Human Development Index measures for Iran are, with China, the greatest in the world. The advances, um, we're not talking about the 80s because they weren't collecting the data the same way. We know there was a terrible war in the 80s, but from 1990 to 2017, it was China and Iran that made the greatest advances in human development in the world. Yeah. You don't read this in the papers, do you? But yeah. here's an independent agency, UNDP. And how was, that, how was that done? The Chinese, of course, had tremendous economic growth. Economic growth is part of human development. In Iran, it was because people were living more than 12 years on average longer. The health system had improved dramatically. And most of that was children were not dying early. Children were surviving. And the children were being sent to school. You imagine what it means sending children to school for, on average, 10 years instead of two years. It means people have a voice in their own society. It means, contrary to the Western cliches, girls and women in Iran have a voice much better than they would have under a monarchy if the monarchy had gone on. Okay, education may have improved under a monarchy, and I, I'm surprised to find when I visit Iran, some people are a bit nostalgic for the monarchy. I'm thinking, what's in your mind, brother, you know? Why are you talking about this monarchy? Maybe they would have doubled the, the years in school, four years instead of two. But no country on earth had increased its education as much as Iran. Now, what did that mean, apart from the children going to school? And many of you know you have children, you know the difference between an educated child and one who's not. The level of industry and technological development in Iran from that huge pool of well-educated people has increased dramatically. Iran had an industry which would have gone on before 1979, which would have gone largely controlled by foreign companies, including the nuclear industry. Yeah. You know, the US sold them uh, an old reactor in 1967, then apartheid South Africa and France sold them some more nuclear te technology. So they would have had one controlled by some foreign companies, but not an independent nuclear uh, uh, industry with thousands of technicians, with thousands of well-trained people. In pharmaceuticals, in the steel industry, which the resistance economy, we have to recognize here that 42 years of economic siege, I don't like to call it sanctions because it's really a war, yeah. it's a criminal yep. war against yep. all the countries that have these so-called sanctions imposed on them. That, plus what is now called the resistance economy, helped develop some of these industries. It means that Iran now exports steel instead of importing it as it did 10 years ago, for example. It means Iran is one of the biggest exporters of motor vehicles in the region, basically. Iran, and this is something we all have to thank them for, has one of the biggest media networks in the entire region. That's why it's always Iranian media that's ringing us up for interviews because they're doing it in so many languages and have so many channels. So the flourishing of Iranian technology and industry, the move away from an economy that was totally based on petroleum. You know, most countries, they call it a petroleum curse. It's not really a curse, but it's difficult to escape dependence on petroleum. Iran has been diversifying, hence the nuclear energy, hence a whole range of other industries. Um, because there's political will in that system, because they are doing things for our own people, they don't want to be a, a disgraceful petro-monarchy as a lot of their close neighbours are, yeah. basically. Yeah. Let's think, and I think this has already been mentioned by some previous speakers, what would have happened in the region? Syria and Iraq 
would have had a much, much harder time dealing with Daesh, dealing with the terrorism Without the Iran, through, yeah. through, their, through their local collaborators unleashed on them. The Palestinian resistance will be much weaker. Yeah. Lebanon would probably still be occupied by the Zionists. They would have had a very difficult time, the resistance in Lebanon, as organized as they are, as united as they are, it would have been very difficult to um, make the achievements that they had in Lebanon. Yemen would be abandoned. Um, Bahrain would be abandoned. Um, so, of course, this is why, I mean, now there is a relatively unified regional resistance with a unified demand to expel all of the foreign powers that have been intervening for so many years there, and of course this is why uh, Netanyahu and anyone who's in office in the White House is apoplectic, is absolutely obsessed with Iran, because this is the one big independent uh, nation there that is indispensable to bring together the resistance forces there. And then of course, I want to finish by saying, the Hassan Soleimani, who knows what would have happened to that man's life had there not been a revolution. But we do know that the thousands of commanders he trained throughout the region would not be there had there not been a revolution in Iran. And so I'm reminded of a, a famous uh, atheist, communist Australian who once said of Cuba, thank God for the revolution. Yeah, that's very good.